Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for yet more dedicated legacy action. Today we're playing something very spicy. We are playing Jeskai Ascendancy Combo. Now, I played against someone, I think it was last week, and they were running a version of this deck. And I said, that looks cool. Let's see if we can make a version ourselves. So, what does this deck aim to do? Well, it's essentially a combo deck with a really strong fair plan in it. So if you haven't seen Jeskai Ascendancy before, this says, it's an enchantment that says, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn, untap those creatures. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. So this lets you loot with every spell you play, every non-creature spell you play, and also pumps your creatures and untaps them. Now, do you know what's really good to untap? Emery. So the plan of this deck is to play Emery, and then play any of these zero drops, whether it's Bauble or Lotus Petal, or the other bauble, and use that to loot through your deck once and untap your emery, which then taps to replay one of these artifacts, which then keeps the chain going. So this creates an infinite combo whereby you have you can draw through your entire deck on that turn. And because you're drawing through your whole deck, you might find some ways of getting card advantage or swapping your hand around with a brainstorm if you need to. But essentially you're gonna draw your whole deck. And once you've drawn your whole deck, you cast that as Oracle and win the game pretty straightforward. However, that's not the only plan this deck has. We have this new card, Third Path Iconoclast. This is a two mana two one. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you create a one one colorless soldier token, which is also an artifact creature. So every time you're doing this loop with Jeskai Ascendancy, you're making a new token. And this token, so if you make a few of these on one turn, the next turn you just make a load and bash for as much damage as you can reasonably muster. So that's pretty sweet. To go along with this, we also have a Monastery Mentor, which does a very similar thing, except all your monks have prowess. So Jeskai Sensei gives all your guys prowess effectively. So you have double prowess on all of your guys with Monastery Mentor in play, which is not nothing, that's for sure. Now, we have the general suite of cards you would expect to see alongside this. So we've got four Brainstorm to help fix our hand. We've got these four expressive iterations because, you know, it's pretty much one of the best cards in the format. It's in our colours. It can help us pull into a relatively fair game. And we've got these four Force of Wills to try and keep ourselves alive. So game one, we're more or less trying to combo our opponent and just muster a huge force that is bigger than whatever our opponent is doing. Also, because we make lots and lots of guys, blocking creatures with initiative should be all right as long as they don't have a seasoned Dungeoneer in play. So we should be able to block creatures and take the initiative because we should just be making a lot of tokens anyway. Now, that could definitely go awry. We, we have one Teferi in the main deck just as a, we need something to bounce certain things in certain situations. But for the most part, we're a little all in on either making loads of guys or drawing our entire deck. Now, when we go to the sideboard, we've got some more tools to fix this. So we've got two more Teferis because there might be some things we need to bounce. And also if we can play this, it means we know we can combo off in safety. We've got a couple of Force of Negation for the decks that are trying to go underneath us, like the combo decks, so we need a little bit more interaction there. We've got these Leylines of the Void for very similar reasons, because one of the main decks that's going to go underneath us is Reanimator, so this kind of buys us quite a few turns against Reanimator, so we can have a Leyline and then sit on some Force of Wills to protect it, potentially. We've got a few Source of Plowshares, because we will need some removal, and we've also got these two Prismatic Endings, because we might need to be able to remove things like Deafening Silence might be a bit of a problem for us. And then we've got a couple of Pyroblasts, which is, you know, just a good card to be having. Now, this deck is not perfect at all. This is a first draft based on me seeing my opponent playing a deck. Now, I think I was playing Painter at the time, so I did get to mill them and see a lot of their deck. And I think this is more or less what they were playing. They said they've been working on it for a little while. But we're going to go with this particular build today and see how we do. And I imagine I'm going to have a lot of notes at the end of how to fix this. So maybe we're leaning too much into the combo here and we could be playing more of a fairer game with a combo in. But that remains to be seen until we get there. I'm also thinking we probably have just about enough red pips here that we could play something like a Fury in the sideboard if we wanted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've got 12 red cards. We can probably play some Furies if we're boarding them in because that's going to up our red count to like 16-ish. So maybe that's something we want to do. And obviously that's the thing you can cast. And I think Fury is pretty reasonable right now. Obviously, we could have... The Solitude is going to be more difficult to cast than this. Obviously, our blue spells are where we have the most 
cards. All right, I think I've spoken about this enough. Though. So let's jump into a league, but just before we do that, if you could like and subscribe to my channel, that really helps me out. It doesn't cost you anything. If I get enough subscribers, then I get a bit of money back from doing this, which makes it easier for me to keep making my five leagues a week. I hope you're all enjoying. All right, let's jump into a league with Jeskai Ascendancy combo in Legacy. So this is our opening hand. We're on the play, so we can make a turn two Iconoclast with a, a creature, with a couple of creatures alongside it. That seems like a pretty good place to start, so I think we'll keep this. We'll lead out on a fetch land. We'll keep these things in hand because we want to leverage them off of our third path Iconoclast. But we'll have a fetch land just in case we need an emergency brainstorm for some reason. Our opponent is going to see that we're a blue deck and they might assume that we're some sort of control deck. Flooded Strand is more likely to be in control decks than Delver decks. So if our opponent does have something a bit busted, we might be able to bluff them with a counter spell we don't actually have right now. One of the things about this deck I've noticed is that we don't have a huge array of um, basic lands. We've got one island because we need to be casting a Jeskai coloured spell. Right, so we'll play out this plateau. We'll crack this. I think we're getting a Tundra. I think we get a Tundra here. So we go blue and red and cast the third path Iconoclast. Violent Outburst. Okay, so we're playing against the Rhinos deck, which I think is a very poor deck and it's very miserable to play against, uh, to play with, sorry. Um, obviously, my experience was playing that deck one time in its first iteration. It's gotten better since then, but I think we'll be okay here if we can spam enough creatures. So let's play this, play this one out. I'm not sure what good brainstorming is going to do us this turn. We can do it if we need to in a pinch. So we're going to crack our bauble this turn. These are artifact creatures, so Emery's going to be cheap if we do find one anyway. We have an expressive iteration to reload with. And hopefully get us into our deck a bit more. Let's see what our opponent has. An Uro. Okay. Not too bothered by the Uro. So we could take four, uh, eight this turn. That's fine. We can take eight the following turn, potentially, unless they have another Rhinos to reload. I think we're probably inclined to do this Brainstorm this turn just in case we find the Ascendancy. Gives us a decent amount of damage to clap back with as well. Okay, so we've got the Ascendancy here, which is nice. So we can probably just go off on the following turn. So basically one of these cards we probably don't need is maybe the third path Iconoclast, unless we want to play that out and just make lots of creatures this turn. And that's probably the safer line. So we can keep the third path and the Brainstorm and just play this guy out, but then we have to crack, so we're going to lose one of these cards. And it means we're either losing the Brainstorm, the Jeskai Sensei, or the Iteration. And I don't really think we want to lose any of those. I think we probably just get rid of the Iconoclast here and leave the Brainstorm on top. And then when we untap, we'll draw the Brainstorm and we crack this and cast Jeskai Sensei. So they're getting a card here. Oh yeah, actually, I forgot about the ball. So we're going to get both of those cards, actually. So we can do the play more guys plan. And start trading with some of these little creatures, perhaps. And play this guy out. So every spell we cast is going to make us two artifact creatures. Which can start blocking and trading with these rhinos. Our opponent is cracking their fetch land here. So this is a leyline binding mana. Or it could be some sort of violent outburst type thing if they're pitching. They're petty thefting our guy. That's fine. That doesn't really achieve a great deal for our opponent. So we'll crack this. We'll go and get a volcanic, I think. We're incentivized to cast a brainstorm here in case we find any um, zero manners. Let's have a look. So we did find a zero manner. We've got a force of will as well. Plenty of things to pitch to it. So only one of these cards is not going to be in our hand this turn. So we don't really want to pitch the Ascendancy. We can put that with the Iconoclast on top. We play this one out. Get ourselves another token. We'll crack this immediately. See the top card of our opponent's library. Fire Ice. Okay. That's a trick that we can play around. And we don't need to attack our opponent this turn. Because we probably need to put five guys under one of the Rhinos if we want to trade. So our next turn we're drawing the Jeskai Ascendancy. We do need a little bit of mana to sort of get the wheels spinning a bit more. We know our opponent has an Uro, but they can't cast it yet. They need a third mana source to cast this Brazen Borrower that is in their exile zone. So we're doing 
We're doing all right. We've got protection, which is something. So all we have to do is survive for a little bit longer. Two, three, four, five. So this plays around the fire as you nearly have. So you know two of the cards in their hand. So we take four this turn. And next turn we can put the Emery into play. And then the turn after we can play the Jeskai Sensei and then draw into our deck. And we have a Force of Will with a Third Path Iconoclast to keep us going. All right. So we took four that turn. We can throw some of our artifact creatures and stuff under the bus next turn. Just need to stay alive. A red and a blue. What is this going to be? Fire. Can I afford to let this resolve? I don't think I can. This will get us another creature. We need the artifact count in order to make our Emery next turn. That's why we're countering that one. Our opponent won't be able to make the another Rhinos next turn. So... I think we start off with red and blue and cast this expressive iteration which will get us another guy which will give us enough for emery and we get one of these in our hand which is probably going to be the expressive iteration one in the bottom of our library is going to be the third path iconoclast and then the flow strand is what we'll play this turn so play this out and we'll cast our emery and then next turn, we get to combo our opponent out of the game. We can throw all of these under the bus if we need to. This has to resolve, but... Okay, so let's pop our graveyard out so we can see. There's no Jeskai Sensei in there, so they don't know they're about to get comboed. In theory. Now, we can also just attack for lethal damage with one creature next turn. Although we need to do it with two creatures, ideally, because our opponent can have the... Uh, a removal spell for one of them, like a Leyline Binding. Or a Fire when we start but obviously we can just keep going then I think we block like this like this and like this so we take two damage no we take one damage from this and our opponent can shoot us for two with a fire which means we can't crack our fetch land potentially we're just soaking up trample damage here sure okay so they've suspended a crashing footfalls they have three cards in hand one of them is Ure. Okay, so we've drawn an island, which I'm fine with. Am I fine with playing? Do I need to play the island out? Let's go here. blue, red, white. Make a guy. Our opponent can have a force of will here. Although I would have imagined they'd have used it on someone like an Emery. We know they've got blue card because of the Euro. But if this resolves, then we get to win the game. It doesn't really matter which of these we get. Let's get the bauble. The Urza's Bauble. We'll cast this. Uh, oh, I've stacked these the wrong way around. Uh, always yield. Always yield. Always yield. Uh, we'll draw a card with this one. And Okay, so they've, they've seen the Rhine on the wall. We get to combo them off. Excellent. Let's go on to the next game. So our opponent is probably going to have um, some amount of way of interacting with our graveyard. But Teferi is going to shut down a lot of what they're trying to do here. They basically can't combo with a Teferi in play. Prismatic Endings and Source Plow Shares can kill their guys quite effectively. So I don't hate these. I don't know if we need to be Pyroblasting here. The Ley Line just for the Euro seems a bit weak. I don't know if this isn't a Thassa's Oracle game. I don't think it is. So I think we can board out with Thassa's Oracle. We're probably just playing a fairish game and just getting them that way. So we're probably... Trimming on things like the Mentor, because the Teferi is going to be the better 3-drop most of the time here. Probably trim on an Ascendancy, maybe trim on an Emery, and then just trim on like a Bauble and another Bauble. So we're basically just sort of playing a fair game here. Uh, we'll probably have to lose one more card to get all these things in. Could be a Lotus Petal. We're a little bit shy on mana, but we're not really trying to cast these Ascendancies that reliably. The Pyroblast is something we can bring in, but the only thing it really deals with, it, it can deal with an Uro or a Brazen Borrower or a Counter Spell. So maybe we use that to force through a Teferi, but if we're using that to force through a Teferi, we're going to have to lose something else. So maybe we'll be looking at just trimming more on these because they're not going to be very good if our opponent's bringing in Ley Lines or something like that, which I imagine is the Greyguard hate that they have. 
we try it like this. We've always got a game three to reappraise the situation. The reason we're not bringing in the force of negations here is because our opponent is quite likely to just cast it on their turn to play around it anyway, and then we just get no value off of it ever. So this hand, we have counter spell and we have removal spell and we have a redraw. So I think we can keep this. We can also accelerate into a turn two to fair if we draw one. Okay, so if they go this turn, that's the smart thing to do. Uh, it's, it's smarter to do it in our turn to play around force of negation anyway. Okay, so just suspending the crashing footfalls. So if we get to fairy and play, that's going to be pretty good for us. Let's see what we draw. So we're looking at just flooded strand, and I would very much like to draw another card. So I'm going to play the bauble out, and we're going to have a look at our opponent's hand. Or a card from our opponent's hand. So we've seen a flooded strand. All right. I don't think we need to play out our Lotus Petal here. I think we can just pass the turn. So by the time this comes in, it shouldn't really be an issue anyway. Like two four fours on like turn five or whatever is pretty weak. So there's a flow strand we knew about, so we can cross that off. What are we going to draw this turn? A Swords to Plaxia. So we've got a lot of their creatures covered. Do we need to play out... Which, which land do we need to play out here? We want to keep some amount of... Um, fetch lands back, but I think we don't want to expose ourselves to anything peculiar from our opponent's deck. So if they have a, the ability to play one of these, they'll probably do it this turn. Now we can just crashing footfall, we can just source the plowshares these, if they make them. They don't have it, okay. So Minsk and Boo is the other thing our opponent can have as well in their deck. That's another thing that they run some number of. So I'd like to keep my Force of Will for the Minsk and Boo and use the Swords for the Crashing Footfalls, ideally. This would be a great turn to draw a Teferi for us. Oh, look at that. He shoots, he scores. So we'll play this out. We'll play this out. So we'll crack this and the other one as well, I think. So this one gets a Tundra. I think we want a Tundra off the other one as well because we've got these two white spells in hand. So we get Tundra here, we'll cast this, so white, blue, blue. Let's have a Teferi in play. This means their Crashing Footfalls doesn't do anything. If they don't have a Force of Will, then we're in pretty good shape. They usually can't fight over things very well because they don't get to play things like Pyroblast and such like. We do burn a Force of Will to protect this, which might mean we have to plow a Minsk and Boo token if they have it. Also, we're incentivized to plus with the Teferi if it does resolve, so that we can't just get it killed by something like Fire Ice. We need it to stick around and play for a bit longer. Okay, so they're cracking a fetch land. This could be something like a Brazen Borrower to then... Or it could be a hard cast Force of Negation. If it was something like a Brazen Borrower, it could be... They play it out, so we're kind of incentivized to bounce, which then leaves us in range for getting Fire Ice. Okay, let's have a look. White Mana. Red mana, green mana, a violent outburst. So put the crashing footfalls on the stack. I think we are counterspelling this. The opponent's only got four cards in hand. It means we will have to use the lowest petal to do the plow on the Minsk and Boo token if they have it. Now, if our opponent does have a force of will in hand, this is probably going to pan out pretty badly for us, truth be told. There's the force of negation. Pitching a brazen borrower. So, not great for us. Oh, they countered the Teferi instead. Interesting. Opponent is hoping to ride this later with crashing footfalls. Scalding Tarn. This could be a Minsk and Boo turn. Green, blue, red. This looks like a Minsk and Boo turn. Shardless Agent. Okay. Fine. Let's see. So, there's a Minsk and Boo that we know about. So, there's a crashing footfalls. So, because the Lotus Petal is the bonus mana and goes away anyway. We, we don't have to plow end of turn, we can do it in our turn. Opponent Kraken is Scalding Tarn. Interesting. Okay, so we have a Force of Will that doesn't really do us any good here. Play this out. I think we are one, two, three, four, five. So we probably counterspell the... We hard cast Force on the Crashing Footfalls, I think. And then we double plow next turn. So we take 10 this turn, which isn't ideal. Kind of a bit shy of action here. So this is probably going to get us a Volcanic Island, I think. So they can put this on the stack. So this is the triggered ability first. So now they get to cast it. And then we hard cast Force of Will. 
Okay, so we take 10 this turn and go to 6. Then we plow both their rhinos. This Brazen Borrow isn't something we have to worry about. It was exiled to the Force of Will. I just got a Violent Outburst as well. No, a Simmon Spirit Guide. Sure, that's pretty good. Ideally, we can draw the third path Iconoclast and then plow plow and get two guys. Uh, a Mentor would also be fine. But the Iconoclast would be better. Okay, so... We plow plow and we're taking four. We don't have a choice, we have to do this. Pin has one card in hand, which means they basically can't cast anything this turn. So it's best to do this now rather than let them untap in case they have a force of negation they can hard cast or something. It seems the best way of guaranteeing that we remove their rhinos. Let's try and get rid of this one and then pass the turn. We'll hold this in hand, it means we have a brainstorm, we can dig more cards. So we take four this turn, we have to find a way of making some blockers. Probably looking at Brainstorm into other stuff is how we survive. Nope, we didn't have anything. All right, we'll concede. So I'm not really a fan of how the having all this removal went for us. So I think we're going to bring back the Force of Negations here, or bring them into the deck. And then we have some decisions about other cards and whether or not we just want more meat on the board through things like Monastery Mentor. Didn't look like they were really packing much in the way of Graveyard Hate, so maybe we would like to try and fit these back in the deck. I do think the third path Iconoclast is probably how we're going to be trying to win a lot of our games. I'm not convinced the Pyroblast is where we want to be. I think I'd rather just have some Emery's to get a bit more card advantage going. Do we, want this? Do we need Jeskai Ascendancy? It's nice to have just so we can press the I win button, especially when we're on the play. It's also blue to pitch to forces, so it's better than having these. I think this will do. We don't really have the land to support this hand, so we have to mulligan. This hand is fine. We can keep this, we can burn off one of the maces. Our opponent kept a seven. They're not going to try and turn one us, no, okay. Scoring turn. A Jeskai Ascendancy. Okay, so we're not a million miles away from being able to do our thing. And we're cracking this one. Turn it Tundra. Cracking this one, it's going to get a Volcanic. That's generally the spread I think you want to have. So red off of this, blue off of this, we'll pay the Iconoclast. Next turn we can Brainstorm and Emery, turn after we can just guys Ascendancy and hopefully win the game. So our opponent can make some Rhinos this turn, and bash us up for 8, and they can bash us up for another 8, and then we can win the game. That is the plan here. Oh, they didn't have it. Okay, we're in pretty good shape then. They might just be a bit heavy on the old counter spells. Might have like a force, force of negation type hand where they're trying to play a slower game. I'm not sure that really favours them because the longer games go on, the worse 4-4s four look, to be honest. Oh, they only had the one spirit guide. Fire on this guy. Sure. That's actually pretty good. That stops us from being able to get the artifacts we might need. A monastery mentor. I think we just dump this monastery mentor into play. Because we know we have all these white spells that we want to cast later on, I think we put the Tundra into play. Let me just cast our Mentor. White, white, blue. A Force of Will, exiling Force of Negation. Sure. So our opponent has expended a lot of resources, and they're not really making inroads into winning the game yet. Now they could play a Shadow's Agent this turn, which would certainly do it, and give them 10 power on board. If they have a Violent Outburst, they should be doing it in my turn. If it's a Shardus Agent, yeah, okay, so it's right through on their turn because that's the only time they can do it. Sure. So they get two 4-4s. Four so this turn we're probably just casting Emery, and we have this Brainstorm in hand as well. I think we cast the Emery. Blue. Blue. No, we want to keep the Tundra up, don't we? Uh, blue. Red. So if this gets to stick around, we can win the game next turn. As long as this mills us an artifact. It's found us an artifact. So if our opponent doesn't kill our Emery or us this turn, we win the game, I think. This could be a Minsk and Boo, which would be pretty good. It might reforce a spell from us. We might have to try and brainstorm into an answer for the Minsk and Boo. We'd be looking for Force of Will and Blue card to do that. When I played this deck, I thought the only good card in the deck was the Minsk and Boo, to be honest. Sure, so this is going to hit us for 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's not lethal. You can have the Rhinos. My opponent has two cards in hand. It has to be Force of Will blue card, I think. We'll just take this. 
Okay, so this is white, red, blue. We'll cast this. We will choose our Mistress Bauble. We will play our Mistress Bauble. Let's see what we've looted out here. Uh, we can discard this. Force negation on top of our opponent's library, sure. And uh, discard sentence we don't need, sure. Now, it takes quite a few clicks to do this, but we've got quite a lot of time on our clock, so I think we're okay. Uh, a bauble. Uh, we can spin that one off. Sacrifice. I think we can get this one back. We can cast this. Uh, let's look at our opponent's hand. They've got Tropical Island, sure. Like this, cast this. Let's cut this. Put this into play. We'll target this. We'll play this. Don't need to draw for this just yet. Say so, okay. And what this does is this allows us to net mana when we're doing this now. So we cut this for blue. And we target the bauble. We cast a bauble. Uh, the express iteration we will keep. This comes into play. Then we target the lotus petal. And we cast the lotus petal. And we get the lotus petal into play. Cast this for red. And we target this. And we cast this. Uh, this one in our hand. This one on the bottom, this one exile on turn to turn. Let me target this. Let me cast this. We're not allowed to draw. We get this out. Then we it's for red. We target this. We cast this. Say no on this one. Should have cast the one from exile first. Uh, to ferry, we can put this in our hand. This one, and then exile this one. Then we. Uh, we crack this, target our opponent, we target our Lotus Pedal, there's a lot of clicks here. We cast our Lotus Pedal. No. That's right. Uh, hold on, we, we generate some mana first, we go red. We target this, we play this, so it's blue. We target this, we play this. No. We get this out, and we... Make white, we target this, and we cast this. Say so no from this. Uh, okay, we have this in our hand, this in the bottom of the library, this in exile. We play this. We will play this. We'll draw a card, get rid of this, and we make blue. So this, play this. So you have two Teferis now, so we can bounce the two blockers. So then this makes red, and we target this. And we cast this, and we bounce this, and we cast this. I know. We make white, target this, and play this. Uh, you will draw a card. Get rid of this. This makes us blue mana. Take this. Play this. We cast this. Using this. Keep this one. Bounce this guy. Go to attacks. Okay, so <laughs> we went through a lot of loops there to, to get that going, but we got the win. So that was pretty cool. So we play our Scalding Tarn. We'll play out a Mystery of Bauble and crack it to try and get some information as to what our opponent's playing. And that'll make us know if we need to fish for something. A Khan the Great Creator. Not a big fan of that. Let's play our second one and pop it again. I should have popped it on ourselves in case we want to fetch away. That was a mistake. We're going to keep this other one in hand though. We get two redraws on that turn. A Lotus Petal and a Bauble. Not great. We will need to find some mana soon. Wowzers. Did they just suspend Ancestral Vision? What year is it? A bauble. So I think this turn we're looking at Volcanic Island Brainstorm. 
Try and find our second land. We did not hit a second land. Okay. This isn't great for us. But we do get to shift a couple of cards off the top of our library. So we don't need the second Emery. And would we rather have all these baubles or this mana? We can draw a whole bunch of cards this turn. Probably just get rid of... Um, if we keep the Lotus Petals... We can't cast... Yeah, okay, this is fine. So, play this out. And this one. And this one. Uh, do we need to do that? So we just play blue for this one. And we'll shuffle those cards off the top. And then I think we are just playing out... We need to draw some more cards here, is the truth of the matter. So let's have a look at our opponent's hand. Chalice of the Void. Okay, so Chalice of the Void for zero is going to be non-terrible against us, that's for sure. And a whole breach. Okay, so this is the Khan Echoes deck. So we've finally identified what our opponent is doing. All right. So we've got some draws. And our opponent's Ancestral Vision is ticking up. We can crack an Emergency Brainstorm if we need to. I'd not like to do that. Red as well. Interesting. This is going to be for zero, isn't it? That's not such a big deal. We can bounce with Teferi. It's going to also hurt our opponent's deck. So I don't mind too much. Hitting a land here would be great. We did not hit a land. I think we have to express the iteration here. So blue, red. Now our opponent could have counted that. That would have been a smart thing to do. Then we put the Monastery Mentor in our hand, the Bauble on the bottom, and we exile the Arab Mesa. And then we play this Arab Mesa. And all of these spells will get countered. We know our opponent has Hole Breacher in hand. So I think we are just attacking for one here. This is probably the last time we get to attack. Our opponent probably doesn't mind seeing us do that either. We really need to be able to get a third mana into play. The way our opponent just let that go with the expressive iteration was very interesting to me since we were clearly floundering looking for land. Our opponent is in a similar boat, it would seem. All right, we're playing this game, aren't we? We do get to brainstorm with a fetch land, though. And not find any more lands. Wowzers, trousers. Um, so this literally doesn't do anything here. And we don't want the Fassas Oracle until it's the right time. So I think we're cracking this for probably the Tundra now. And we're brainstorming again because we really need to make our land drops. Still no land drop. Yikes. Um, so we're not casting Ascendancy anytime soon. We're probably pitching the Force of Will. So it's probably these two, right? So we're probably pitching the Emery to the Force of Will. We can attack here. And then next turn we can third path Iconoclast and make a few guys. Because we can play this out. It'll just get us a 1-1. One, one. It basically is a Memnite in our hand right now. Which is better than nothing. Our opponent's Ancestral is ticking down. Once that pops, we're pretty good. I was kind of hoping to get the Teferi in play first. But things can't be choose. They have enough mana to cast the whole breach we know about now. So we can't attack into them anymore. And drawing extra cards is going to be pretty hard for us to beat. So, let's play out this guy. I think we have to counterspell the um, the Hole Breacher when it comes down. So we'll cast this. This will get countered, but we'll get a guy. We'll play this out, which will get countered, and we'll get a guy. So this is going to be an end of turn Hole Breacher, I think. I think we just counter it. This will also buy us another 1-1. One, one. Which isn't nothing. Sure. So this gets countered by the Chalice of the Void, right? Because it's converted mana cost is zero. Yeah. Not the greatest play I've ever seen. Truth be told. No shame concession. No shame concession. So our opponent can cast a whole Breacher again. So there's this guy's Senancy we knew about. So let's target one of our balls. Let's play this. Make another guy. And I think we attack. I think we only attack with two, just in case I have another hole breacher. And then we have two back on blocks. You got another hole breacher? They do have another hole breacher. Sure. So the choice I made was to stop their hole breacher from attacking and force one damage through. Because we, we basically have a bit of blossom in play. We're getting one token a turn. So we can just keep building that up and up and up over the next few turns. Obviously, if we draw a Death Guy Ascendancy, then all of a sudden we are making much larger guys. Uh, sorry, if we draw a land for the Jeskai Ascendancy. And any of the lands in our deck 
will allow us to cast the Ascendancy. Days Undoing, on the other hand, is not really where we want to be. So we're going to lose our hand here. So let's see how we do. Not a bad one. So this is red mana, this is blue mana. So we get one of these in our hand. So I guess, do we just want another land in our hand? Just so we can be guaranteed to cast more of our spells? Or is this force of will going to come in handy down the line? We kind of only need three mana as a thing. So I guess we put this in our hand. And then we put this in the bottom. We exile the Flood Strand. And play this. We're in a holding pattern, but our opponent does get to keep doing draw sevens. They have a full grip and loads and loads of resources now. So I think we are very much behind right now. Now, the thing about these Days Undoing decks is they're very bad at actually winning the game. So they do their combo, but sometimes it doesn't really do anything. Like, we've got a pretty reasonable board. We're not that many cards away from being able to win the game. Like, one Jeskai Ascendancy and one Zero Drop, and then we're looking pretty good. Fury is a good one. We get to see more of our opponent's deck, hopefully. So we're going to lose this, maybe the Emery, and a token. Or they might just strip out this and some tokens. Sure. Let's strip in those out because they figure that we can't really do much with our Emery anyway. Which is a pretty reasonable thing to assume. I don't think their deck can realistically be playing Chalice on zero. Rabble Master. What is our opponent's deck? I can't imagine they're playing Force of Wills. If they've got all of these like prison pits and beatdown guys. One, two, three, four, five. So... This turn, liquid metal coating. Next turn, if they draw a land, they just get us, right? So we can block this guy. A plateau. As we play out. I think we had, I think we should stop wasting our time here, actually. I think we're far enough gotten here. So. I like Force of Negation in this matchup. I like the Pyroblast in this matchup. Quite like Prismatic Ending. And I quite like the Teferis. I'm not sure about the plows, but we did see a lot of stuff in their deck that would be very plowable. So 11 cards is a lot to sideboard in a matchup, though. How do I feel? We're, like, we're probably shaving some of these things. Uh, I like the petals because it lets us get in front. Do I think this is a Thassa's Oracle matchup? I don't think so. I think we can just draw our whole deck and to ferry bounce away any of the problem permanents. I think that's just going to work fine. We're probably trimming Mentors because we're bringing in Teferis. Although well, Mentor does pressure very well. Bring this out. We don't want to be too reactive. Do we want to trim Brainstorms or an Emery? It's really hard to sideboard with decks like this because your whole deck is kind of your plan. Like, we couldn't fit any removal in the main deck, really. We had one flex slot, pretty much, and that was the Teferi. Uh, maybe we're getting rid of this Jeskai Sensei. I think we need the third part of Iconoclast still. I don't think we can trim on Mentors any more than we have. Can't really get rid of blue cards, which means we're probably looking at getting rid of some more baubles. We're still two cards shy. I don't know if... I don't really know what I'm supposed to remove here. Maybe we're looking at boarding out... We're not boarding in the plows, just boarding in one of them. That seems fine to me. Pyroblast does the same thing as plow most of the time in this matchup. Now, we did see Furies and things, though. Um, we've got these Emery's that don't do a lot, but we can make our guy. We have Removal Spell. We have Mentor. This is a very pressure-heavy hand. This is sort of the low end of what I think is keepable. I think we play out the Plateau just in case they play out something scary on turn one. Like They might be like Lotus Petaling, Ancient Tombing out stuff. There's the Scorning Tarn. And nothing's going to come out of it. Excellent. So, this turn I think we play this out. Crack this. For... Is it Tundra? Or is it Volk? I think it's Volk here. But we do have a lot of white sources and a lot of white things. So maybe we just want the Tundra here. And we go blue and red. Play this guy out. And then we play ourselves out of Bauble. This will give us some things that can pressure the Khan. Not that I'm expecting the Khan to hit play in the near future. Question is, do we crack this bauble? I don't think we do. I think we save it to make our Emery affordable for next turn. Emery will only cost us one blue, which means we can play it and then we can hold up the plow. A Chrome Mox from our opponent. 
putting the goblin underneath it. So the player goblin out this turn, we can path it on our turn. Uh, it's not path it, plow it on our turn. Which is not the ideal, but a blood moon. How problematic is that for us? It's a bit problematic, I won't lie. So now I think we are cracking this. Scoring times off of our opponent's library. We do have a basic island in our deck. We have this pyroblast, which has text on it. So the creatures. Okay, we're going to need a little bit of help here. Didn't anticipate the blood moon, to be honest. We have Lotus Petals in our deck. We have four of them, so we're currently holding up our Pyroblast for a whole creature or whatever. Which will also give us an additional block, uh, additional creature. I don't think it's worth trying to get a, uh, a quicker clock just by firing off on anything. Right, a Mishra's Bauble. This is a good one. We can play this out. It makes us a guy. I think we're attacking with everything and using the Pyroblast to kill the whole breacher that our opponent is representing. Which speeds up our clock. We will also look at our opponent's hand here. Uh, our top card of the library, sure. So we've got Scalding Tarn and a Volcanic Island here. We're getting the bits in. A Lotus Petal. So this is great for us. This allows us to play the Emery or the Mentor. If we play out the Emery, then we can just get the Lotus Petal back every turn. So that seems like a pretty good play to me. They played a Scalding Tarn that we knew about. Okay, so we have two Lotus Petals now. That's pretty good for us. I think we just play out the Mentor here and then play out the Petal. Uh, the only issue with that, actually, is... No, I think we play out the Emery, right? That's the safest play here. This gives us access to all of our Petal effects in future turns. So then we can play this out. We can attack and we have a Plow if they have a creature. This gives us another guy as well. Like, Fury is going to be good on this board. There's no denying that. But we're under a Blood Moon. We're playing the game that we have. Our opponent has one card in hand. And this Volcanic. But if we can start tapping with the Emery, then I think we are in a good spot. That has a relatively big if, though. Dak Faden. So this could steal artifacts, right? Sure. Or it's just going to be drawing. So they're probably going to discard in this Volcanic Island they have in hand. I would imagine. They did not. Okay. And there it is. A pain cost. So they've drawn something. Hopefully not Brotherhood's End. Okay. This, this shuts down our coloured mana here. An Arab Mesa. So this is just a mountain. So we'll try this Lotus Petal. We can't cast it, but... Well, we can cast it. It won't resolve. But it gets us guys. So if we put these guys at Dak Faden, I think that's... Correct. So this attacks one, two, three, four. This attacks our opponent. This attacks our opponent. This attacks our opponent. So these four at Dak Faden, and these are our opponent. So we get their planes walk off the board, so they can't get any better draws. They're just stuck with the one card they have in hand. And we have lethal on board. Have we done it? Or not? Okay, sure. So we can go back to sideboarding. Is there anything we would like to change now that our opponent is playing Chalice and Blood Moon together? I don't think so. Like they can shut off us of, us, off of Coloured Mana relatively effectively. Um, but we do have the Prismatic Endings to maybe blow up a Chalice or a Moon. It's a little bit harder to blow up the Moon because we need two Lotus Petals to do it. Or our basic island that we're probably going to be fetching with a bit more gusto this time. So, do we want another creature? Do we want more removal spells on the draw? These are the cards I'm thinking about. I don't actually think we need a Jeskai Ascendancy in this game. I don't think that's what we need to be doing here. I do still like the Teferi, just as an answer. And it is a blue spell. I don't think we can realistically cut another blue spell here. Maybe we can cut another Bauble. Makes our Emery a little bit weaker, though. Hmm. It's either an artifact that we're cutting, or it's like pyroblast swords prismatic ending type deal maybe we don't maybe we don't need the mentor uh, the mentor gets out of hand so quickly though if we can drop it maybe it's the maybe it's the ending here it's, oh, it's either the ending or the teferi actually let's try it without the no it's a blue card ah it's hard magic's a hard game let's do this okay so we have a turn one third path iconoclast with Force of Will back up and making a token. Like, 
Our opponent's gone to six. That's got to be fine for us. Well, not fine, but decent. Let's see what you've got for us. They don't seem like they're big on the turn one plays, but I could be mistaken. A chalice for zero. I don't think we can allow that to resolve. So we're going to lose our Teferi for this. They do have Force of Will. They haven't shown us any Force of Wills in the previous game. Okay. Interesting. So our opponent pitched a Brazen Borrower. So now they're on, like, hardly any resources. This Emery is going to be pretty poor, unfortunately. This can fetch us an island, which is why we played out first. Our opponent's Chrome Moxes are shut off from their own Chalice. Expressive Iteration is a pretty good follow-up to have. So we'll crack this and get ourselves the island. And this one can go and get us a plateau, I think. That gives us all of our colours. Cast this for blue and red, which is also what we'll need for the Expressive Iteration next turn. We have a choice as to whether we play out the Lotus Petal now, just to make some guys. Is it worth just throwing these Lotus Petals away when I could brainstorm them away? Our Memnite's going to be good. I think they're probably going to be fine here. Right, so we've made two one ones, and then next turn we get to cast Expressive Iteration. And that should pull us out of the hole. We can also cast Expressive Iteration through a Blood Moon, but it won't be particularly good necessarily. But they didn't have a Blood Moon, so very nice for us. So we will Expressive Iteration here. This gives us red. This makes us a guy. Let's see what the Iteration finds us. This is tricky. Um, I think we probably just keep the Force of Will in hand, and then we're just exiling the Mentor here. Is it the Mentor or is it the Force of Negation? Which of these would we like to have in our deck? If we exile the Force of Negation, our opponent will know that we have a Force in hand, I think. So we're going to exile this one. And play this out. And we'll start attacking. So this Emery is just a card for Force of Will at this point anyway. We can play it out and start making tokens. But it's much better as a blue card right now. We won't crack our fetch in case we draw a Brainstorm. Fairy Time Raveler. That is a good one. So I think this turn, we... Or I think we attack with everything and see if we have to block or not. What's happening here? Prince cracking a Prismatic Vista to get a basic mountain. They're cracking a Scalding Tarn, probably to get a basic island. Kozilex Return. I think we have to counterspell this. This will make us a token as well. Uh, so I think we're getting a Tundra here. Casting this. I think we're just going to plus this for now. We have no reason to hit this, and this could be hitting our opponent's stuff, because we've already seen zero drops from our opponent. Oh, another Kozilex return, though. That's pretty backbreaking. Yikes. Okay. Our opponent's deck is a lot of different stuff here. Uh, I think we bounce this. See what we draw first. If we draw the Mentor, we deploy the Mentor, otherwise you deploy the third path. Or we draw some more cards. So let's go this and actually, I think we're actually supposed to cast this guy out and just start pressuring our opponent. So blue and red, we hold up what looks like a white source. Because we can cast this through a blood moon as well, I think we just need to get the maximum amount of damages going. Our opponent's only at eight, so we can shut off this ancient tomb pretty soon, hopefully. A chalice for zero, cool. And a Blood Moon. That's fine. That doesn't impact the board. That's not what this game is about right now. Okay, we'll plus this. Then we can't cast this because we have no white mana. So we are casting this. So we're going blue and red. Let's see what we find. Uh, Brainstorm is good here. Mentor, not so much. I think we are Brainstorm in hand. Mentor on the bottom. Scalding Tarn exiled. So we can't cast a Brainstorm this turn. But it will be there for future turns. This will put our opponent to six. We can bounce the Blood Moon next turn to deploy our Mentor and a Brainstorm. Because our Teferi is on three. Our opponent... Oh, so they got the Blood Moon actually, so the Ancient Tomb doesn't matter anymore. Sorry. Um, means they don't have enough mana to cast a Fury right now, which is the thing I'm most scared about that our opponent can play. Although they could play some random card that I don't even know, which could be scarier. Because that's kind of what our opponent's been doing a bit. A chalice for two. Okay. That doesn't impact what I'm doing. Let's see what we draw. 
an emery. I think we are bouncing Blood Moon here. Okay, so then we are casting white, red, and mm, I want to crack this for blue, I think. We want to keep up our island in case our opponent has a fury as well later on. So this probably wants to be a volcanic island, I think. And then we'll get blue off of this. We'll cast this mentor. Then we play this one out. We get attacks. Attack all creatures. Opponent's got a blood moon and one mystery card in hand. We keep the brainstorm in hand in case of fury so we can pump our monks in response and make additional threats that would hopefully be enough to kill our opponent with. Okay, we got the match. So this was a showcase of the fair side of the deck. We didn't have the combo in and we just kind of played some guys and pressured. So that was pretty good. We managed to ride through two Kozilek's returns, a Chalice of the Void on zero, a Chalice of the Void on two and a Blood Moon. So pretty happy about that. Let's jump into the third round. We're on the play for round three. Our hand is a little bit slow. It's a good pressure hand, but we have this blank Thassa's Oracle, which I don't really care for. It's a good fair hand that applies pressure. I think we can keep it just because on turn two we can make this and a, a bauble. I'm not in love with it though. The Tundra, we care about getting waste standard less than the Volcanic Island because we're mostly a red-blue deck. We just happen to have a little bit of white for Mentor and, Jeff and Cyborg cards and stuff. Right, a basic plane. So this is giving me D and T vibes. So we could spam out a mentor here. But I think the best play is still just to make this guy. Uh, so we go red and blue and play this guy out. This uses less of our resources. So play this one out, make a guy, play this one out, make a guy. Let's have a look at top our opponent's library. A wasteland. Oakley Doakley. Well, if our opponent wants to wasteland us on turn two so they don't have any more plays when we've already got stuff on the board, then I'm pretty happy with that because we can play an uh, expressive iteration off of it as well. Ooh, another iteration. Turns out playing really good cards in the format is a good idea. Okay, so we're looking more towards Maverick maybe or Green White Depths. Thalia. Sure. That's not bad against us, to be honest. The first strike body, pretty nice. So, you can play this one out. I think we... Go and get ourselves probably the basic island here. And we play out the mentor. We don't need to attack this turn. Next turn we can express the iteration. So dealing with the Thalia is actually pretty difficult for our deck. Like we can just go around it, which is why we played the mentor out here. So there's a wasteland that we knew about. Probably going for our red source. Yeah. We were hopefully going to find another one off of our expressive iteration. Stoneforge Mystic. Sure. So this is another problem we have a little bit where some of our opponent's creatures are very strong. Sword of Light and Shadow. Wowzers, I haven't seen that one for a while. If you're not familiar with this one, protection from black and white. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you gain three life and you raise dead. Pretty nifty. Been a, been a hot minute. All right. A land would have been nice. We can't actually cast this Ascendancy because of the Thalia. But we can cast this. So we need red, blue, and this can be white. We will always yield to these abilities. Because that will save us time in the long run. That is one of the things that this deck is a little bit worrying with sometimes, is the amount of clicks you have to do. All right. I think I would like a brainstorm in my hand. Or we've already got a Jeskai sentence, actually. Yeah, so brainstorm in my hand, sentence on the bottom, Tarn in exile. We'll play our Tarn. I don't think it's worth sending our monk in. I have to imagine this means our opponent has a Cauldra, right? That's kind of what it feels like. But we can, we can go wide enough to beat our opponent, I think. And these are colourless, so they can block whatever's holding the sword whenever. Now, the Cauldra is definitely an issue. If they had the Cauldra in hand, they would have put it into place, surely. So if we draw a land this turn, we can play the Jeskai Ascendancy. We draw a Lotus Petal, which is a bit like a land, but not quite. Uh, we could just play out another Expressive Iteration, which I think is probably the most powerful thing we can do. So let's go and get ourselves a little Volcanic Island. And we'll cast this... Um, yeah, we haven't played a land yet, have we? So we're fine. Uh, red and white again. It's got some triggers. And let's see what the top of our library holds. We're ideally looking for a land here. Not finding a land is a little bit awkward, truth be told. We want the Emery because this can give us our combo potentially. So we'll take the Emery into hand. Um, we can't cast either of these. 
So I guess we put the Iconoclast in XR because then our opponent has already seen that, so it's not going to be giving away additional information. I don't think we need to attack with the Monk yet. I think we can just pass here. I have to imagine they've got a better equipment than the Sword of Light and Shadow here. If this is what they're putting in, and it's got to be like a Battle Skull or something. No, it's just a sword. Wowzers. Very strange to me. Not even a Jitte. The Windswept Teeth. So our opponent's got access to some scarier spells here. So they're equipping that to this guy. This is a very easy chump block for us here. They can't be casting a non-creature spell here. Because Xyla cuts both ways. Let's go ahead and go in there. If we draw a land, we can get a Jeskai Sentency, and then I think we're rolling. There's a land. So I think we can play this one out. So this is blue, white, red, white. Let's have one of these. Put these on the stack. And this turn we can attack with our monks. So we do have to get the fire off the board. And the only way you can really do that is by training with it, which is going to be very hard to do. Or by um, getting our Teferi and bouncing it. Okay, so we've got another Stoneforge Mystic. This can immediately put in the thing it finds. Now, if they attack us with everything, I think we can probably kill them. Okay, and Umazawa's was Jitte. That is a good one. Stalio's... Oh, it's not even attacking. Interesting. Mm. So what is our decision tree here? So we can play an Emery for one mana. That seems like a good place to start. I think then we're probably... Uh, so how big will this be? This will be a 4-4 four four if I play one spell because of this. Then if I play another spell... It'll be a 6-6, six, six, so it can tussle through this. And these monks can also tussle. But then our opponent gets to Jitte us. Interesting. Um, maybe we play this out, paying one here. Okay, our opponent's just scooping because we're just making so many massive yachts. All right. So, I think this is a matchup where Plough and Ending are going to shine. Whereas the Teferi feels less good. I don't think this is a Force of Will matchup either. So that's almost a clean cut. If we take out the Tef The Teferi is a nice thing we can have to deal with a problem permanent. But we also have these Source to Plowshares anyway. The question is, do we even need Thassa's Oracle in our deck? I don't think our opponent's going to do anything to stop us from winning the game, if you know what I mean. They're not going to have, like, ensnaring bridge or something. And if we draw through a whole deck, we can get rid of a Peacekeeper. Or something like that. They're not going to be running... Um, what's it called? Like Glacial Chasm type effects. That's not really something that's in the DNT wheelhouse. These can be a little bit problematic. To have all of these. So maybe we're supposed to trim... To get the Teferi in? Is that better? I think we just want our... Our engine here. And we just replace our counter spells with removal. Because... If we draw a counter, if we draw a counter spell to turn after the scary things we put into play, like a Thalia, that doesn't do us any good. But if we draw a removal spell afterwards, we get to get it. So what does this hand do? It gets pretty crushed by Wasteland. Not a fan of that, but it does make a turn one Iconoclast, and we're on the draw. So I think this is fine. Not fine, fine, but all right. So Windswept Teeth. This could be a Noble Hierarch. Yeah, there's a Noble Hierarch. Sure. So our opponent is. Getting ahead on mana here. Oh, we've drawn another Lotus Petal. That's very interesting. So we have choices here. We can try and just go to town with Mentors. But I think what we're supposed to do is play out the third path Iconoclast here. Red and blue. We play this guy out. Then we play this out. Get a token. And then if we need to, we've got an emergency brainstorm. Like if we're getting wastelanded, we can brainstorm end of, we can brainstorm for a, a resource. This is going to be... Um, do we brainstorm now? Is that worth brainstorming this turn for? I think it is. I think we're going to brainstorm the response. Let's see what the brainstorm yields for us. Two lands and a prismatic ending. This is very good. This is what we want. Uh, I don't think we need the ascendancy. So we'll put that one back. I'm going to take the third strand. We'll shuffle away the ascendancy. Sure, you can have your Thalia. So we can exile the Thalia with the prismatic ending here. But they have a 
Caracas, so they can just bounce it. So it doesn't feel great to do that. Let's play this flooded strand out. So we can decide if we want the ascendancy or not. Maybe we just want the ascendancy, just play mentor into um, expressive iteration over the next couple of turns. Our opponent doesn't have any like big sledgehammer things. They're not natural ordering us usually with these sorts of decks. Kazali Pride Mage, sure. So that's making the Jeskai Ascendancy a bad draw here. So we're going to shuffle away at end of turn. This is attacking for four because of the double exalted triggers. This is like a proper, this is like a deck that you saw like, I don't know, like eight years ago or something. Or maybe longer than that even. Especially with the Kazali Pride Mage. This is a pretty real clock though. So we can just try and play the Ascendancy and get our opponent with it that way. But I do think we are cracking our fetch here. Our opponent can have Choke in their deck. So we're going to get the Plateau here. Choke is scarier than Wastelands for me, I think. Let's see what we do. A Brainstorm. So this will be good down the line. This turn we just play the Lad. So I think we're already sort of priced into getting non-basics here. So I'm just going to go and get a Blue Source, and it's probably going to be the Volk here. That means it's going to be very hard for them to Wasteland us off of the Expressive Iteration next turn. So we've got the Mentor. These are also Monks, I believe, as well. No, this is a Monk. Yeah, it's a Monk that makes Soldiers. Not sure on the flavour of that one, but so be it. So next turn we can Expressive Iteration, get a load of card advantage, and then start hopefully burying our opponent, as long as they don't have any really scary top-end stuff. Haven't seen a Stoneforge yet, which is probably the best clock they have in their deck. And neither Reliquary. Sure. So we can Prismatic Ending this one instead. Which I think we probably have to do. Outland Liberator. Sure. So they've got all these uh, bits and pieces to mess with artifacts and enchantments. So playing the fair game without our artifacts and enchantments is probably going to be pretty good here. I think we can just take the four here. We could Prismatic Ending away the Thalia, but I think the Knight of the Reliquary is a scarier threat. So we're going to have to deal with that. So the way Prismatic Ending works is very good for us. So we target this. We go blue, white. Nope, we need to do that right. This needs to be red, white, and blue. We target this. And because of the way Thalia works, it taxes it, but then it just checks the colours on the way this resolves. So this is pretty good for us. It's a shame we couldn't take the Thalia down while their Caracas was down. But we get some more creatures here. And then we get to remove their scariest threat. And then next turn we can gas up again with the Expressive Iteration and hopefully draw some removal. We can attack with this, but that's not going to end well for us, I don't think. We just have to pass a turn. If this flips at some point, it can start attacking just chewing up a token on attacks. I think now we're probably inclined to start blocking with soldier tokens. And Umazawa's Jitte. That's a pretty good one. So, this is going to be huge. We might lose this one. We're a little bit behind now. We're probably losing our mentor this turn. I would have to imagine that's where the minuses are going to go immediately. So it might be a bit tricky to pull our way back into this one. Not impossible, but certainly tricky. Our opponent could also make a mistake and not immediately kill our monastery mentor. Looks like they're not going to make that mistake. Sure. So that's our best threat down. So I think we are casting this. So that's red, white, and blue. It becomes very hard for us to pull through this jitter, I think. But we definitely have ways of being able to do it. None of these are really what I describe as ways of doing it. So we don't really need another Jeskai Ascendancy, do we? Although if we keep playing them, our opponent will definitely keep blowing them up. So I guess we keep one in hand, put this on the bottom, play the island, play the island out, cast this, paying one, pumps our monk. Our opponent's pretty low on resources though, but they do have a Jitte. Let's see what their one card in their hand is. Sylvan Library, yikes, that's certainly not going to put them low on resources. So they have to double block if they want to kill the monk. I think I'm okay trading the monk for one of these guys. Now, this is our opponent's game to lose, I think. A series of good top decks can get us there, but they're going to have to be very good. After Prismatic ending away the Umazawa's Jitte, for example. This time we lose the third path iconoclast. So if we get to 12 minutes, and we might just take one or two more draws, actually. And then, because we want to make sure we have enough time to win the third game. 
Sure, so we're losing our, our guy there. I'll probably take out the monk here as well. And the library. I'm pretty sure we're dead here. Like, we need to draw the prismatic ending from that would just say this turn, I think. Otherwise, we lose. So, we cast this one. Is this any good? No, we can concede. Save time. All right, on to the final round. Do I want Force of Wills for this? Or is our five removal spells enough? I don't think we're going to want these Jeskai Ascendancies, to be honest. Given the way our opponent has approached this matchup. I think we're better off just having it. How many got? Four, eight, so that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21 blue cards is enough. I think I'd rather have forces just as a little buffer against the Imazawa's Jitte Stoneforge type shenanigans. On the play, I'm pretty happy though. Uh, sure, this is a turn one third path iconoclast backed up by Force of Will. And we get to draw a card off the bauble as well. I'm certainly down for this. So this one is probably getting us a basic island as our first land. Red, blue, play this guy out. Play this out. We're doing this now because we want to have the most chance of having a different blue card to pitch to Force of Will because Brainstorm would be a nice one to have because it kind of keeps you going. All right, a Tundra. If this is just a high right, that's fine. We let that go. It's a fairy time wrap, but that's not really what we want right now. So let's brainstorm, get token. Hmm, we don't want these lands, I don't think. I think we are just putting two back. Or do we want to keep a fetch land? Maybe we're putting back Tundra and Arab Mesa just to make future brainstorms better. Play this one out. Play this out. I go top card opponent's library. It's another one of those. That's fine. Attack for three. Hold up this force of will. We crack our Flooded Strand in our opponent's turn. Uh, oh wait, hold on. No, 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 no. We don't want to yield to this. We want to crack first because we don't want to draw the bad card on top. So this is probably a Tundra that we get here. But it could be a Plateau to dodge the choke. So we get the Plateau. And then we draw a card that isn't one of those two Arab Maces. Although the way the Modo Shuffler works probably means... Okay, we drew a Brainstorm. That's good. So that means we can choose between the Teferi and the... Um, brainstorm to pitch here, depending on what our opponent wants to play. All right, we are just trying to tempo our opponent out here. What is this going to be? A Knight of Autumn. So this will blow up one of our guys. That's pretty fine, I guess. Oh, they're just pumping their guy. Okay. That's even better for us. We just to ferry it away and carry on. Oh, expressive iteration. Okay, so we can do some stuff with that in a bit. So crack this. This gets us a Tundra, I think, this time. Or no, we get a Volcanic Island, so then we can't be Wastelanded off of Express Federation next turn. This. this is white, red, and blue. Get another guy. Bounce this guy. We're just playing a full-on tempo game here. Chunking our opponent. Like, if they want to make the same play again, that's probably no good. So they're going to have to do something else. Just playing it again. Is this one where I'm tempted to counter it now? Or would we just attack round it? Hard to say, actually. So pitch this and probably get rid of the... Is it the Brainstorm or is it the Third Path? The Third Path gives us just another guy to do stuff with. If we draw a land, then keeping this guy is good. If we don't draw a land, keeping this guy is good. But we're going to... I think we get rid of the Brainstorm here. We're just going tempo here, making guys... Okay, so we drew a land here. Now, this is a little bit awkward. We're kind of hoping to hit into a... Um, yeah, we're kind of hoping to hit into a zero drop off of our um, expressive iteration here. So we need blue from this one and red from this one. Cast this. Okay, we did not hit the thing we required there. It's a bit awkward. We keep the prismatic ending in hand. The force of will goes into the bottom... And the Volcanic Island goes away. We can't play this because we already played a land this turn. Five guys. We don't want to trade our third path guy into the Dried Arbor. The one thing that undoes us here is a Plague Engineer. That would be pretty annoying. But these are different creature types. So we wouldn't lose everything. They have to choose between getting rid of our tokens or getting rid of our two ones. And that's not actually an easy choice when you're on six life. It probably has to be the Soldier tokens and then we can rebuild. Okay, so they're just scooping it up. So we are 3-0 and with this deck so far. And... Feels pretty good. Um, I'm not sure how much you actually need the the, um, 
the combo plan, but it's nice to have. Maybe we'll get to combo someone else out again. All right, let's go on to the fourth round. All right, we're into the fourth round. This is our opening hand. I don't think two redraws and no land is anywhere near good enough. We're going to mulligan. This hand is fine-ish. We have an emergency brainstorm. We have an expressive iteration to pull ourselves out of it. And we have a bauble for a redraw if we need it. I think we don't want to cash in the bauble straight away because we want our opponent to not know what we are. But we also want to have the option of making tokens with this as well as making our emery cheaper. So we're going to keep this hand. We're going to bottom the Thassa's Oracle and we're going to hopefully have a good time. It's been working so far, right? So we're on the play, we play out our Tundra, we have a Brainstorm available. Now if this gets Wastelanded, that's pretty bad for us, but again we have the Emergency Brainstorm. I hate Brainstorming on turn one like this, unless I'm playing a combo deck. But hopefully it won't come to it. Snow Covered Island. This makes me, my first guess is Omnitel for my opponent. I don't know, I've just seen a lot of that lately. Okay, so we can play this out. I think we play out one Bauble here. I think we need to cash in, I think we can hold it for an Emery. Let's see what our opponent offers us up. We can emergency brainstorm if we need to. Our opponent is brainstorming, presumably with a fetch land to make it into a perfect brainstorm. This is how you're supposed to play brainstorm. You play your brainstorm before you play your land, so you have maximum information, so then when you play it and crack, play your fetch land, you can crack it with knowing as much as possible. Like the only time you might play your fetch land first is if, okay, I didn't have a fetch land, that's interesting. The only time you might play your fetch land first is if it's the one fetch line in your deck that gets all of your lands. So like a scalding tire and a blue red deck type thing, because you're not going to have a better option. So now, but even so, you might want all the cards on top, so you might not want to play the fetch line. That's our turn. Do we want to crack off this brainstorm or this bauble? I don't think we want to do either of those things. Now this is a choice. I think we express the iteration and hope to hit into a um, zero drop, or a land, sorry. So we'll put this in our hand, put, uh, we'll exile this, uh, we'll, sorry, we'll exile the island, because we want to play a blue spell this turn. So we play out the bauble here, which lets us cast the emery for more mana. Let's see what our opponent gets to see. Nothing too unusual. So we are going to crack these baubles now, a veil of summer. Okay, we might need some sort of counter spell in the near future. If our opponent has a ancient tomb here, then we're in trouble. Because they can force a, a Veil of Summer plus cast show and tell. And I have to imagine that would be bad for us. Now they might not have the pieces to put into play. They've been doing a lot of sculpting though. A Chrome Mox. Interesting. I wasn't expecting to see a Chrome Mox out of this deck. I've not seen it, I've not, I've played this deck once, the Omnitel deck. Now it could be something else to be honest. Whoa, what is that? Thoughtseize. Dark Ritual. Okay, so we're looking at a Storm deck here instead. I see. Cabal Ritual. I haven't seen Ad Nauseam Tendrils for a long time, and now it's cropped up twice recently. So this is an Ad Nauseam. Now our opponent can miss on this one. Uh, that should be enough, right? They've got the Cabal Ritual. They don't need to keep going here. Okay, that is more than enough here to kill us. We just concede to save time. Right, so a stormy matchup. So these Force of Negations are going to be decent. These Pyroblasts can only hit cantrips, which is fine, but not incredible. The Ley Lines are okay, these are okay. The Teferi isn't that exciting, I don't think, here. It, like, it stops a very few niche lines. So, what are we looking to get rid of to put in all these things? Uh, we can probably get rid of one of our Teferis. That'll get us a Force of Negation. That's a straight one-for-one one swap. The Jeskai Ascendancy, we might just be able to do our thing relatively fine here. So we might not need these Mentors. So I guess another Force of Negation. If we pitch these other two Mentors for two Ley Lines, that stops past and Flames Lines. The Thassa's Oracle definitely has text in this matchup. Um, it's a case of whether or not we want these things. I think this is a matchup where we want to try and be able to combo off. The baubles might be a little bit slow here, so we can trim a couple of those for the two ley lines. And then it's a case of do we want to try and pyroblast? Like, the pyroblast isn't going to help, I don't think. You can hit a cantrip, but you can't hit any of their business spells. Whereas, I think we can... Also, another reason why the ley lines is okay to have is because we can discard them with the Jeskai Ascendancy when we get rolling. 
So let's see where we stand here. If we have more mana, this hand is good. But I don't think we can do a do-nothing hand like this against a Storm player. Hmm, this is also a do-nothing hand, but in a different way. This is like turn one iteration, but we don't have blue card. I think we just have to mulligan here. Okay, this is the best one we've seen so far. So we've got to get rid of two of these cards. So we need pressure. We need a force of will. I don't even know if we can keep the ley line here. It does shut off past and flames lines. So we're definitely keeping two lands. We're definitely keeping our pressure. We're definitely keeping our force of will. And we're definitely keeping a blue card to go with our force of will. Which means we're probably keeping the either the iteration or the brainstorm. So we're definitely putting the ley line away, unfortunately. And then we're looking at, do we want to keep a brainstorm as an emergency? I think we probably have to here, as much as it pains me. So we are playing this one out. And if we need to brainstorm in an emergency, we can. So like hiding our cards from a duress, for example. And I'm going to see from our opponent into a ponder. That's fine. So next time we play out the third path iconoclast, then we try and pressure them with that. Holding up our force of will. Narrow Mesa. Sure, we can save that for the brainstorm turn. So this is red mana. This is blue mana. We play this guy. Now we might have to force of will pitching brainstorm, which would be very bad for us. But our opponent might not be able to go off this turn. Abrupt decay on our threat. Interesting. I'm surprised our opponent's gone for answers like that. All right, so now it's our turn. So I think we have to brainstorm here, probably keeping our red mana available. Expressive iteration. So we want to cast that, but we can't really cast it this turn unless we cast it off of the Lotus Petal, which I think is okay. So we can put this back and we're trying to find a land and we will get to find one of these lands off of the Expressive Iteration. So if we put these two back, we cast Expressive Iteration, then we're only getting one of these cards. And we need to find a second blue card if we do this play. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is the way that gives us the most chance of seeing another blue card. This is red and this is blue. Okay, so we found another. So this goes in our hand. Uh, this goes in the bottom of our library. This goes into exile. We play this for the turn play this one out and we need to see more cards so I'm not feeling very happy with where we're standing right now so they got an abrupt decay so they that's not a card that wins in the game but it's a card that buys them turns we do have force of will available if they try and go off but they're probably not going to go off until they because I'm not applying pressure they don't have to go off until they can protect it with veil or dresses so they are in a very commanding spot right now we know they've got this decay Emery Okay, this does something. It uses the oh, it uses the abrupt decay in their hand. Is it better just to keep it in our hand rather than just eat this abrupt decay we know they have? I think it's better to keep it in our hand because it's a blue card to pitch to force of will and we might be able to find another blue card for a second force of will. Interesting how knowing about that abrupt decay has changed the dynamic of this game. Another lotus petal. Sure, so now we have force of will and pitch cast force of will available. Our opponent, knowing that, might be tempted to abrupt decay one of our petals just to keep us off of hard cast force of will. A thought seize. We have to let this hit us. Veil of Summer is just better for them than thought seizes for the most part. I imagine our opponent can't go off this turn anyway. I feel like I'm so far behind right now. Scalding time, you say. Uh, we probably keep this for a brainstorm so we can get rid of it. We're in a pretty horrible situation here. Our opponent isn't really, doesn't seem to be drawing anything to go off immediately. So they're just waiting until they hit the right thing. So do we play one of these out? No, we have Brainstorm in our deck. We just say go. We can use the Emery to clear the top cards of our deck if we have a Brainstorm that's particularly bad and we can't shuffle for some reason. But this game feels pretty over to me. A Dark Ritual. Okay, well they know we have this Force of Will, so they're not going to do this unless they can do the things. This is Veil of Summer, which if we counter, we well we have to uh, we have to counter this. Cast this targeting this. So we get a Tundra. Got three, and the run is going to end here. So blue, 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 white, white. The reason we're casting it like this is because it shows it, so that we might have something else. So it might not need to go off this turn. 
They might wait another turn and give us a turn. But if we don't counter that, they definitely kill us. Okay, let's see what they reveal here. They should just have us now. It looks like they're just going to keep going regardless. They got two Cabal Rituals. That should be plenty of mana. A Lotus Petal. Another Lotus Petal. Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual. We needed like a fast hand for this matchup. We mulliganed a little bit uh, an okay-ish hand, but just didn't really get there. Abrupt Decay. And then they're just tenderly losing us out. Sure. So now we are 3-1 and one going into the final round. Uh, there's definitely ways you can build this deck sideboard-wise to make it better against Storm. So one of the options I was considering was the White Ley Line. Because the White Ley Line is pretty good. Now, our counter spells are much better against the Epic Storm. But this this version, the Ad Nauseam Tendrils, has got way more like interaction and like um, discard and veils together sort of thing. Whereas the Epic Storm doesn't have that, it just tries to keep pushing through with multiple relays. So this deck is actually better against us normally, but it's probably weaker in the format because it's the slower Storm deck. So there's so many quick clocks and things like that now that you kind of need to go early. So I don't think this is that well positioned, but it's been doing a bit better recently, which is interesting to me. I think Eve Progenitaries is helping a little bit, but yeah, I'm not too sad about that one. Let's go on to the final round. So we're on the play. This hand is going to be all right in a fair matchup, but not so much in an unfair matchup. I think we can keep this on the play. We're pretty insulated from Wastelands as well. We'll play this one out so we can get a base card if we need to. Take like turn one Russia Blood Moon on us or something. We can still pretty much play our entire hand under it. Okay, so our opponent is playing Oops All Spells here. Sure, so we are dead here. That's fine. It's going to be a quick round one way or the other. Land of the Void is going to be good here. Force of Negation is going to be good here. Teferi is going to be too slow. These Jeskai's Ascendancies are going to be too slow. We're just cutting one more card. We don't want to cut any blue cards. We'll probably cut a Mentor here. Is there any point in having removal for Xantid Swarm? I don't hate having removal for Xantid Swarm. We're not going to need Thassa's Oracle here. Uh, so we can have in Plow. We can probably just trim these mentors just for a little bit of protection against Xantid Swarm here. Like mostly we just have to stop our opponent doing their thing, then we can win the game with whatever we have left. That's my experience playing with the Upsal Spells deck. Uh, I don't think we can lose with this hand. We have double force of will and we have well, we have double force, we have plow for a Xantid Swarm. So we can get round a Veil or a Thoughtseize. Play this one out and pass. Okay. Cabal Therapy. Interesting. Um, we have two forces, so go ahead. They're probably going to name Force of Will. Sure. So we lose our force. Our opponent knows they can't really beat what we, we're showing them right now. We do need a threat to close the game eventually. We've drawn another Force of Will, so that's pretty good for us. We will need to win the game, though. Until we get to the winning the game stage of things. A dark ritual, sure. A balustrade spy. We will hit this pitching. Probably the Emery here. If we didn't have the force of will, we hit the dark ritual that turn instead. So now I think we brainstorm away. Yikes. Uh, do I want this other volcanic island or do I just want some more juice to get going? I think we'll crack this now. So get to Tundra, a Brainstorm, put out a Bauble, and a Bauble. Let's see what you're working with over there. A Chromox, okay. And what's on top of your library? An Agadim's Awakening. So they've got some mana here. Let's draw some more cards. An Island, not really what we want. A blue card, okay. And it's also a win condition, so that's good. Okay, so they're just scooping it up. So they probably don't know we have Ley Lines, so that's good. I think we just resubmit. I'm pretty happy with how this went. So we ideally you want a forced ley line hand. Uh, sure, I'll take this. Our opponent probably has one foundation breaker in their deck. You usually have one of those in as a hedge, although considering what they've seen from our deck, they might not. They probably aren't expecting ley lines because you wouldn't normally have ley lines in like a Jeskai control deck type thing. As a general rule, at least. 
But because we're like a combo deck, we don't really want to mess with things too, like, too much. Okay, a Lotus Petal. A Dark Ritual. Okay. We have the Ley Line here. Thought Seizing Us. Interesting. Okay, we just let them do that. Okay, so they're going for the beatdown plan by the looks of it. We can't deal with that, so that's fine. An Emery would be a very good draw here. That's not an Emery. We keep these in hand for now, and we pass a turn. Yeah, so they're just on the beatdown plan here, which can get them there, but it's very unlikely to. Let's play this land out. Next turn, we can hardcast a Force of Will if we need to, but we are in desperate need of a threat here. A brainstorm would really fix up our hand, hopefully. Am I going to get beaten by a 2-3? Could happen, to be honest. An Emery, okay. So this is one of the ones we wanted to see. Let's crack this. And go and get ourselves a Volcanic Island, I think. Cast blue, get the Emery into play. So our opponent does have one reanimator in their, one reanimate in their deck. And we play out one of our lands. We keep the other one in hand, I think, at this stage. We need a bauble. I think if we can draw a bauble or a brainstorm or an expressive iteration or a Jeskai. No, we brought out the Jeskai sentences this matchup, didn't we? So, like, we can lose to this 2 3. And if our opponent has a foundation breaker in their deck, they can just get it with a, a thingy and just kill us that turn. Hmm. This isn't great for us, is it? Uh, I think we attack with our Emery this turn. This is not how this matchup is. This is not how these two decks are supposed to interact with one another. We have Force of Will up anyway. We're saving these for brainstorm purposes. We need to make sure that our brainstorms are as good as possible because we are a little bit behind in the world's stupidest race. They know we have this Force of Will. Elvish Spirit Guide. Sure. Like, we did have removal that we kept in our deck. That was the thing that we did. For the purposes of Xanthid Swarm. Force of Negation. Okay, so we're not attacking with this anymore. Let's keep these cards in hand. We could definitely lose to this beatdown plan. We do need to find some gas at some point. Oh, don't play another creature. Don't do it to me. Yikes. We're in trouble here. If we can just draw one third past Iconoclast or... One of our things, I think we're okay here. So this is for this turn, and then for the next turn. So I think we have to keep the Emery uh, alive this turn, in case we draw a third path, and we can make one of these. A Wild Cantor. Are we countering a Wild Cantor for one damage this turn to save multiple damage next turn? Yikes. Um, like it's one damage either way, right? This puts both of these things to lethal. This is one of the worst games of Magic the Gathering I've ever played. Wish, wish I'd have counterspelled the Elvish Spirit Guide now. But I thought, come on, my deck that's full of draw spells has to find something. Like, we can Force of Will here if we need to. It'll cost us one life. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Come on, we need to draw something here. We've only drawn lands this turn. A bauble. Talk our opponent's library is Elvish Spirit Guide. So, if we draw... This protects us from damage for a turn. We just need to hope that the one card we draw is an action spell. We can draw we can draw a second card, but we're looking for an answer. So I think we just have to pass a turn here and hope for the best. This is abysmal. I've only drawn mana this entire game, and we drew a bauble this turn. Great, we just lose the game. Alright, so we went 3-2 with this list, and... The final game was probably one of the worst games of Magic I've seen for a while. It was just pretty unlucky. I think 90% of the time minimum I win that game. But I just happened to... Excuse me. Happened to draw nothing. I think I probably should have Force of Willed the Elf Spirit Guide to buy me more time. But the fact is, I just drew nothing. I had like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Like, I had more than a quarter of my deck were live draws. And this went on for about five turns of not drawing anything. So, 
I can feel a bit aggrieved on that one. I think that matchup is very good for us because we have the ley lines and counter spells. I think it's probably about 70% in our favour, maybe. We just bricked on draws, really. And sometimes that's going to happen. All right, so what do I think about the deck? I think 3-2... Isn't what the deck deserved. I think it did deserve the 4-1 today, but we didn't quite get there due to a bit of variance. But in terms of the actual list, it felt pretty good. We didn't really do much of the Jeskai Ascendancy thing. Like, we did have a turn, we did have turns against the Death and Taxes player where we played it, and it was basically enough to give us damage without going infinite or without going big on it. Just a couple of triggers a turn was enough to be scary enough to win us the game. So that was pretty good. I think. The Oracle plan, I don't know if you need the Oracle plan. So when I played against my opponent who I saw playing this deck originally, they lost the game to me because I had Glacial Chasm. And they had removed their Thassa's Oracle plan for the league they were running. So there should be more Glacial Chasm in the meta now than there was, because I think Glacial Chasm is actually very good right now. So maybe you do need the Oracle. But at the end of the day, it is a blue card. So you can pitch it to Force of Will. I don't know if there's a way, like you could always just play one thing that gets rid of something because you, you generate mana as you go with the Lotus Petals. So I think maybe we can um, have like a thing in our deck that isn't the Thassa's Oracle that is just more useful. So something that blows up any permanent might be better. That's, that's just an option. Uh, like the Teferi was good. Like we had the game where we cycled through our deck till we played two Teferis. We used them to bounce the blockers and just attack the lethal with the Emery. That was pretty sick. We didn't need the Thassa's Oracle for that because we had the Teferis. I think the Teferis are very good. Uh, yeah, I think the core of the deck is fine. There's not much you can tweak with it, to be honest. I think if you're looking at things to change, I think you want to have one Teferi in the deck. And obviously you need these. So we'll move these to one side. So these are the cards I think you can change Maybe one of the mentors potentially, but I don't know if you need four Jeskai Ascendancy. Although it is just like the straight win if you get these two things. So, and I'm not sure you need the Thassa's Oracle. If you had an interactive spell instead that could hit any permanent, I think you would probably be better off because you could just filter through your deck until you find that and then go to town and, like, you know, swing with a giant guy, make a load of things. You could even have a grape shot in here which I think might be quite useful because it's removal that comes in handy and it's also um, a win condition. So maybe Grape Shot is where you want to be here just because it's going to be more useful than Thassa's Oracle a lot of the time because Thassa's Oracle is either a blue card, which is okay, or it's the, the last card that you want to draw and win the game with. Now, Gra Grape Shot isn't a blue card, but it's useful at other points in the game. It can take out a Thalia, for example, and let you kind of do your thing. So maybe that would be better. But otherwise, I think the deck functions pretty well. I, I just think third path Iconoclast, making it on turn one or two with some baubles and stuff is just very good. The mana base, like we had a few games where we didn't draw a lot of land. We had that last game we drew only land. So a little bit awkward. But I think it should be fine. Maybe we could trim like an Ascendancy for a Ponder or another Teferi or something. It's just something to help smooth things along perhaps. But that's an option we have. As for the sideboard, the Teferis were excellent. The ley line was great. We lost the game to the beatdown on the Upsal Spells deck, which is not really a thing you expect to happen. We have removal spells. I think the ley line is probably where you do want to be. And then it's a case of the numbers of these. These are more or less the things you want. Maybe you want other singletons for the sheer fact you can cycle through your whole deck when you're trying to go off and there might be a problem permanent. So maybe you want the thing that blows up Glacial Chasm in your sideboard, or you can have the Thassa's Oracle in the sideboard. That's another option we could do, we could work with. And maybe that means you move something like a Prismatic Ending to the main or something like that. But I imagine these are the slots we're looking at messing around with. Uh, Hydra Blast would also be a thing that you could look at because there's a lot of red spells kicking around that are quite nice. That you want to nab, but a lot of them get caught up by the Pyroblast, which I think is just going to be better most of the time and help you force through. The Force of Negation was obviously, well, I say good in the Upsal Spells matchup, but it, it was it has some text 
And it was, maybe we could have something else. The only problem is we can't play things like Deafening Silence because we need to cast a lot of spells. But maybe it's so good against our opponent that we could have it in our sideboard just for the Storm matchups. But I don't know if that's enough. Whereas just having Force of Negation is a really good catch-all and lets you fight around a lot of other things. So yeah, I think that's about it. I think this deck is very promising, actually. The core of just making guys and going wide and making them big is very strong. And then obviously the Emery plan just gives you a load of extra resources to work with as well as just an oops I win button, which if you know me, I'm a big fan of oops I win buttons. All right, I think that's us done for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, pretty experimental fun little deck and I might play it again. I think it's good enough that with a little bit of tweakage and a little bit of better variance on our side, we could 4-1 or 5 over league with this. I don't think that's out of the question at all. So it'd be quite a nice one to get troth with. So maybe I'll jam this a few more times and see. But other than that, I think we're done. So if you could like and subscribe my channel, that'd be really helpful. Comments, also welcome. I'd like to know your thoughts on this deck because it's kind of a new brew that needs a little bit of work and a bit of love. So let me know what you think. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.